Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duel, better known to y'all as the Big D. And so now, though I was attempting on doing a solo review of these, this, these next two Friday the 13th movies, one was supposed to be last night, but I had to reschedule it. So now I have to put in a you back-to-back know, -back review with the movie, one of the movies I was going to do today. So now, I am proud to bring to you a back-to-back -back review of Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood from 1988. Let's see now. Yes. And Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes My Hand from 1989. First of all, before I get started, let me get out the take the Jason mask off so you can see me. <laughs> I'll let you let you guys see me in the mask for a little bit before I get into the reviews. Now, and first off, I'm gonna do the new blood. Now, I will tell you that this again, like Jason lives, it kind of got its brutal scenes heavily butchered by the MPAA, so no good gory stuff in it, what have you. Still, it was still a, a fairly good movie, as a matter of fact. I do know it's a favorite of one of my fellow YouTubers, Silver Shamrock, I believe. Check his channel out. He's, he started doing his own vid, so... This review is just for you. The first review is. So I'm going to kind of make this a back-to-back -back review, especially for two of my two good YouTubers. So here's the Part 7 review, especially for Silver Shamrock. Now, I'm going to give you five seconds to stop this video before I go into the review, because if you've not seen this, you were warned. Here's your five seconds to stop. Okay, here we go. Now, the film's cast includes Laura Park Lincoln as this young lady named Tina Shepard. Now, years have passed since Tommy Jarvis chained Jason Voorhees at the bottom of Crystal Lake. I'll get to the rest of the cast in just a moment, so I'm just going to go ahead and get into the story. Since then, the Shepard family have lived near the closed campgrounds. Now, young Ch Tina Shepard witnessed her alcoholic father physically abusing her mother. Now, her mother is played by Susan Blue, who was best known for doing a voice, voice acting in cartoon series for a few years, going from Fang Face to uh, the Filmation Ghostbusters cartoon to Brave Star, which she did the previous year. And, oh yeah, and she was also in the last couple of seasons of the Transformers original series, Generation 1. Anyway, she attempts to leave the chaos of her home on a boat, and when her father falls her outside... Accidentally unlocks previously latent telekinetic powers, which results in her father's death at the bottom of Crystal Lake. Now a teenager, Tina is still struggling with the guilt surrounding her father's death. Her mother, named Amanda, takes her to the same lakeside residence as part of her treatment from her psychiatrist, Dr. Cruz, played by Terry Kaiser, who I know him from some things. The only thing I know, the only thing I remember this guy from was the underrated family movie Six Pack. Let's see, where was I? Oh, yes. So they began a series of experiments, most notably verbal assaults designed to agitate Tina's mental state, forcing her powers to become more pronounced. However, it is later revealed that Dr. Cruz is really trying to exploit Tina's powers. After particularly upsetting session with Dr. Cruz, Tina runs from the cabin and to the dog thinking about her father's death. 
While thinking about him, she wishes he would come back. So instead, she accidentally resurrects Jason, who is played by Kane Hodder, as he was the one, as this guy was the one and only person to play Jason more times than any other. This would be his first time in playing Jason, and releases him from his chains. So he ascends from the bottom of the lake and renews his terror on the area once again. Next door to the Shepherd residence is a group of teens who are throwing a birthday party for their friend Michael. The group includes Michael's cousin Nick, Preppy Russell, and her girl and the, his girlfriend. I'm, I got mixed. I'm sorry, everyone. My apologies. And his girlfriend Sandra. Ben and his girlfriend Kate, science fiction writer Eddie, stoner David, Perky Robin, Chai Maddie, and snobby socialite Melissa. Anyway, Nick, who has j arrived just for the party, becomes attracted to Tina, much to Melissa's charge. Chagrin. Sorry, I mispronounced it. Melissa attempts to break up. Nick and Tina even going as far as kissing Eddie to make Nick jealous. But her schemes are to no avail. Tina tells Nick about Jason and has a vision of Jason murdering Michael. Meanwhile, Jason kills Michael in real life. Along with his girlfriend Jane and later kills another couple camping in the woods. Which of course features a sleeping bag killed that we only see in one Quick hit and no others. That's that's a real downside. So while Tina goes off to find her mother with Nick at her side, Jason proceeds to kill the other teens. So Russell and Sandra decide to go to the lake for a swim. Sandra goes skinny dipping, of course, but Russell is killed with an axe to his face. And Sandra discovers his body before she is pulled under the water and drowned. Maddie goes looking for David, but finds Russell's body. She runs for help, but Jason attacks her in a nearby barn and kills her with a sickle. Oh, yes. I I do remember seeing the character of Maddie. She kind of almost looks like a young version of Irma from, teen, from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon series, which actually, Susan Blue was a, a voice director for the show, as a matter of fact. Uh, let me see now. Then Jason kills Ben by crushing his skull, and then Kate driving a party horn to her eye. Oh yeah, that's a pretty good kill. Yep. So, inside the house later on, Jason stabs David and slices Eddie's neck open. As he's feeling spurned by Melissa. And Robin finds David's severed head and is thrown out a window to her death. Yeah, just like one of the Double Mint Twins in Final Chapter. And, uh, don't mind. And, guys, forgive me for bringing this thing up. I do, I have seen this, remember this character well. She had nice tits. Sorry for bringing that word up. I know, I'm a ladies man. I can't help it. <laughs> Sorry, but enough about that. Where was I? Oh, yes. Jason later attacks Dr. Cruz and saves himself by using a man that has a human shield. Eventually, Jason kills him with a pole chainsaw. Tina finds her mother's body shortly afterwards and uses her powers to electrocute Jason and crash the house, the house down on him. Yeah, this girl has telekinetic powers, of course, just like Carrie. So Nick and Tina try to tell Melissa what happened, but Melissa, of course, thinks they're nuts and tries to leave the house, but Jason slams an axe into her face, killing her. Yep. So Nick tries to fight Jason up, but is quickly subdued. So Tina... Gives it all she's got, unleashing her powers, which forces Jason's mask to tie in until it breaks into revealing his disfigured face, which is freaky! As the battle rages on, the shepherd lakeside cabin is destroyed by an explosive fire, and attack continues on the dock. 
Although Tina is unable to kill Jason, she unknowingly summons the spirit of her father who emerges from the lake and drags Jason back down with him to the depths of Crystal Lake, chaining the killer once more. The following morning, Tina and Nick are taken away in the ambulance. Someone finds Jason's broken mask in the wreckage, and the screen fades to black while Jason's whispers can be heard from far away. Now, some of the story was well, good and what have you. The characters were kind of hit or miss. Now, I did like I did like Tina, though. She was definitely good. And I did like Kane Hodder's performance, first performance as Jason as well. It was really cool. Now, actually, I have read they... Now, this was actually supposed to be a crossover with Nightmare on Elm Street, which, of course, the same year this came out, we got the fourth Nightmare on Elm Street movie, which, of course, was The Dream Master. But, unfortunately, it wouldn't come into fruition until 2003 when Freddy vs. Jason came out. Oh, well. But, anyway, would I recommend The New Blood? Well, you be the judge, but I'm going to say, sure, give, go ahead, give it a, give it one try. If you like it, good, and if you don't, well, you don't have to take my word for it. Okay, enough said. Onward to the next one. Here we go with a review. This is going to be a special review for Heartbreaker. It's Jason Takes Manhattan, Friday the 13th, Part 8. From 1989. Now, the film brings Kane Hodder back as Jason. Plus, there's Jensen Daggett, Scott Reeves, Peter Mark Richmond. Let's see. I'm trying to see some others. V.C. Dupree, Kelly Who. Yeah. Who would lay a cheap bear fame in the, the Scorpion King and X2? Yep. Charlie Martin. Huh, and so many others. Now, actually, this was actually the very first Friday the 13th I've ever actually got to see, and before I even got to see the, uh, the others, its predecessors. But anyway, you got five cents to stop this before I go on with the review, but I'm sure Colton, aka Heartbreaker, will be more than happy to watch this. Won't you, pal? Here's five cents to stop, if you haven't seen it. Okay, you've been warned, though, people. Other people have not seen this movie. Here we go. One year after the events of the, the previous one, two graduating high school students are aboard a houseboat on Crystal Lake. Now, this guy, Jim, tells his girlfriend, Susie, the legend of Jason, before playing a prank on her with a hockey mask and a prop knife. However, the boat's anchor damages some underwater cables, which eventually shocks the corpse of Jason, and the zombified Jason is back again. He sinks on board, takes the mask, kills Jim with a harpoon gun, and impales Susie with a barb. Yeah. Now, of course, this kind of didn't do so well like New Blood. This... Didn't bring so much, but oh well. It was the weakest before. So now don't don't hate me or anything. I don't hate the movie though. It just has a few I don't know moments, but I do like it for certain reasons. But again, I don't hate it though. I do like Jason Takes My Hand for certain reasons. Anyway. A ship called the, the SS Lazarus the next morning is ready to set the set sail for the Big Apple with a graduating senior class from Lakeview High School. Chaperoned by biology teacher Dr. Charles McCulloch and English teacher Colleen Van Dusen. She brings McCulloch's niece, Rennie, uh, along for the trip despite her aquaphobia, much to his chagrin. And Jason sneaks on board, and 
So then the killing starts. Now, my na my real native is Jason's teleporting so much. I think it's because he got electrocuted, and that's probably what's causing this, but I may be wrong, though. Anyway, he kills Rockstar wannabe JJ with her guitar. And once we see a little bit of blood splat on the screen, but unfortunately... You guessed it, the MPAA came on that this movie hard like a guillotine. I don't know. But anyway, later a young boxer who lost his match to champion Julius is killed when Jason slams a hot son of rock into his abdomen, which that's got hurt people. Rennie searching for her Border Collie Toby discovers prom queen Tamara and good girl Ava doing drugs. McCulloch nearly catches them moments later and Tamara pushes Rennie overboard suspecting she told on them. So she uses video student wing to record McCulloch in a com compromising situation with her but rejects Wayne's advances afterward. Now... Yeah, see, some of these characters can be a little hair miss as well, and what have you, and I completely understand. Well, after a shower, Jason eventually kills Tamara with a shower of broken mirror after she showers, yeah. Then, Rennie sees visions of a young Jason throughout the ship, but the others ignore the deckhand's warnings, so Jason kills Captain Robertson and his first mate. Rainey's boyfriend, Captain Robertson's son, Sean, discovers him and tells the others before calling for an emergency. Eva finds Tamara's body and flees in the moment she, in, in that moment she meets Jason and chases her and Eva enters the disco room where Jason falls and blows like teleporting like crazy, sort of, and then violently strangles her to death before throwing her body onto the dance floor. So the students agree to search for Jason while McCulloch decides that the deckhand is responsible. Yeah, the deckhand, I'm gonna say, is like Crazy Ralph in the first two movies. Yep. And some of the other old guys who give up warning from some of the other movies. Anyway. But soon the deckhand is found with a fire axe in his back. So Jason tosses student Miles into the sea to his death. And Julius is knocked overboard as well. In the hold of the ship, Wayne comes upon JJ's body and is thrown to an electrical box by Jason. So Wayne's corpse catches fire and causes the ship to sink off camera. With the other students dead, McCulloch, Van Dusen, Rennie, and Sean escape aboard a life raft. And discover Toby and Julius are still alive. They rode to New York, where Jason stalks them through the streets. Yeah, now this is another bad aspect that people don't like about this. I cannot understand. I don't quite mind it either, because we have to wait a long time before Jason comes to New York, because this is Jason Takes My Hand, for heaven's sake. <sighs> Sorry, everyone. Rennie's kidnapped by a pair of junkies, and the group splits up to find help, but Julius, but soon... And Jason is now up on the rooftops with Julius. He's fighting him, and boy, he's being so hard. Thinking he's like, I don't know, a TJ combo from Killer Instinct or something like that, but without the gloves. And, and, and soon he gets exhausted, and after Jason doesn't go down, he's like, come on, take your best shot. And... Yeah! One single hand decapitates his hand with one single go hit and falls right into a dumpster. Soon, Rainy escapes from Jason when he kills the, the goons that kidnapped her and runs in the show and they reunite with the teachers and the police before Jason kills the officer who is helping them. Rainy crashes a police car after a vision 
of Jason the Stretcher. Van Deuce is incinerated in the car when it explodes, unfortunately, and it is revealed that McCulloch is responsible for Randy's fear of water, having pushed her into the lake as a child. They leave him behind. Jason drowns him in a barrel of toxic waste. Ooh. So Jason t chases Ray and Sean to the subway. Sean incapacitates Jason by knocking him onto the electrical third rail. But Jason revives. He chases them through Times Square where he scares a group of teenagers by showing them his deformed angry face after he kicks and destroys a boombox. So he chases Ray and Sean from a diner to the sewers where they encounter a worker. He warns them that the sewers will be flooded with toxic waste at midnight. And Jason appears and kills the worker in the shadows. Sean is injured, but and Ray draws Jason off, wounding him with a splash of acidic waste. Jason is forced to take off his mask, horrifying ring. So she and Sean climb a ladder as Jason starts to get them. Well... We kind of do see a vision of young Jason or something, and that's, I don't know. Soon, just as Jason's about to kill him, the sewers flood and engulf him. Rainy sees a final vision of the child form of Jason as the waste recedes. The two escape to the street where they are reunited with Rainy's dog Toby in Times Square, and that's that. <sighs> Well, again, I don't hate the movie. I like it a bit for certain reasons. Now, I did, I did like Jensen Daggett's portrayal of Rennie, yes. And I will say that uh, Julius's kill is probably the best of the bunch. Thank you very much. Again, Kane Hodder was absolutely great. But the rest of the cast was, like I said, hair miss. The story's... Okay, but it just didn't take much place in New York, Manhattan, okay? But it's still okay and all. I'm not going to diss this movie, so that way I won't hurt, heart, so I'm not hurting Heartbreaker's feelings. Thank you. I do like it, but again, for certain reasons. So, anyway, would I recommend it? Well, give it one try, and if you don't like it, well, can't say I tried. But anyway, that's going to do it for my reviews of Friday the 13th, Part 7, Part 8. If you liked, which one did you like, 7 or 8? Tell me in the comment section, like the video, and subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And join me again later on today when I get to reviewing... Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. Now, I almost forgot, Jason Takes Manhattan was the last Friday to be produced by Paramount before New Line Cinema got the character for Jason Goes to Hell. So be on the lookout for that review later in the day. I'm sure Heartbreaker's looking forward to that one as well. I heard that was one of his, that's one of his favorites too. So anyway... Thank you for watching, and if you liked what you saw, you can click on the links to the previous Friday the 13th. In that corner is my review of Friday the 13th, the original. That corner will be my back-to-back -back review of Friday the 13th, parts 2 and 3. And in that corner will be my recent Tommy Jarvis trilogy review of Friday the 13th, the final chapter, A New Beginning, and Jason Lives. And in that corner will be the subscription button, well, the link to my channel, that is, so you can check me out. So until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya!